multinational joint task force in the Lake Chad Basin says several hundred fighters from jihadist groups Boko Haram and Islamic State West Africa province have fled to Chad and Cameroon this after the task force attack camps and killed more than 70 terrorists this week. Moki Edwin Kizeka reports from Yaoundé that an ongoing operation dubbed Lake Sanity 2 aims to obliterate all terrorist camps around Lake Chad. Scores of villagers shout they have lost at least two dozen relatives in attacks in villages along Cameroon's border with Nigeria. In a video circulated on social media and broadcast on Chad State TV, the villagers say they also need help to treat at least 12 people injured in the June 30 attacks. The Four Nation Multinational Joint Task Force of the Lake Chad Basin Commission, or MNGTF, created to fight terrorism in Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, and Niger says the deceased seen in the video are some of the more than 70 Boko Haram and Islamic State terrorists neutralized in the recent attacks. The Joint Task Force says many jihadists surrendered in air and ground operations that were launched on Sunday but did not give a precise number. The troops say many other fighters were captured and huge consignments of weapons recovered. MNGTF says none of its ground troops involved in the attacks on the camps were wounded. MNGTF says the operations targeting terrorist hideouts in border villages, including Mokolo and Waza in Cameroon, and Mubi, Menchika and Magagali in Nigeria, are part of an ongoing operation called Lake Sanity 2. A release from Task Force spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Abubakar Abdullahi says the operations are to wipe out terrorist camps in villages on the border between Chad, Cameroon and Nigeria and a portion of the Lake Chad Basin shared by the three neighbors. Midjiyawa Bakari, the governor of Cameroon's far north region, is asking civilians to watch out for fleeing terrorists. No force de défense se sont mis au côté de population. Bakari says when troops of the multinational joint task force of the Lake Chad Basin Commission informed Cameroon that terrorists are infiltrating neighboring towns and villages, President Paul Bia immediately ordered a deployment of government troops to the border to protect civilians. He says Cameroon has also asked local militias in all border towns and villages to help stop terrorists from advancing and reporting all strangers or groups of people entering Cameroon to government troops. Bakari, who spoke on Cameroon State TV on Tuesday, said the porous nature of Cameroon border with Chad and Nigeria make it difficult for troops to single-handedly stop jihadists without the assistance of civilians. Chad's government says it has also deployed what it says are enough troops to stop terrorists from hiding in its territory. Chad says within the past two days, its troops have killed several and arrested many militants, but gives no details. Boko Haram began launching attacks in Nigeria in 2009. In 2013, Cameroon, Niger, and Chad reported that the terror group had launched attacks in their territories. MNGTF, which was created in 2014 to fight the militants, says it has about 11,000 troops and rescue workers. The United Nations says the conflict has left more than 40,000 people dead, mainly in Nigeria, while 3 million have been forced to flee their homes. Speculation is rising over the abrupt removal of Tanzanian Revenue Authority Commissioner General Alfayo Kidata earlier this week against a backdrop of discontent among foreign investors and domestic traders over questionable taxation practices. 
President Samia Suruhu Hassan on Tuesday named Zanzibar Revenue Chief Yusuf Ujuma Mwenda as the new TRA boss in place of Mr. Kidata, who had held the position since April 2021 moving him to an unspecified advisory role in State House. Mr. Akidata was in his second stint as the head taxman, and his latest transfer came as the government prepared for discussions with members of the diplomatic corps to address a raft of complaints they raised last week about alleged unfair taxation of foreign direct investments in Tanzania. Although there has been an argument that the 60-year-old Kidacha, born December 28, 1963, was already past public service retirement age, the timing of the move also coincided with a second strike within AR by local market traders protesting long-running harassments by TRA officials and agents. Curiosity was further piqued by State House Chief Secretary Moses Ikisulukar's announcement in the same July 2nd brief of a replacement for Industries and Trade Minister Ashatu Kijaji, who was part of the government team involved in protracted talks with the traders last week. Dr. Kijaji moved the Vice President's office as Minister of State responsible for Union and Environment Affairs, exchanging portfolios with Selemani Jofo. No reasons were given for any of the new appointments. Earlier on June 26th, Tanzania-based ambassadors and high commissioners from 10 countries lodged a formal request to Foreign Affairs Minister Januali Makamba for a meeting to address recent and ongoing challenges faced by foreign investors in relations to TRA tax administration. The envoys who signed the request later a copy of which was obtained were from the United States, Canada, Britain, Ireland, German, France, Belgium and Netherlands, Sweden and South Korea. They cited, among other things, an ev evidenced TRA notices demanding payments and account reconciliations dating back up to 15 years, extraordinary tax bills not supported by law and TRA's rejection of tax concession agreements with the Tanzania Investment Center, TIC, another state agent on the grounds that they had not been gazetted. Investors also report that TRA agents threaten investors and Tanzanian partners when companies protest or appeal these practices and freeze or seize bank accounts and company assets without notification nor timely legal resource, the envoys later stated. According to them, TIC's success in rising the value of FDI registration from US dollar 3 million in 2021 to US dollar 5.5 million in 2022 had become undermined by the trend. They say, despite undergoing regular audits by TRA and state endorsed international audit firms, some investor companies were now receiving notices with additional demands for tax payment.